Hello and welcome to Life with Dr. Amanda. I'm Dr. Amanda and it's time for another Medicine Monday, where it's a bit different this week and we're going to be speaking to a patient with sickle cell. So this patient is called Laurie and she's going to tell you more about herself during the video, um, but we had an interview on Zoom. And I think with the diseases, with conditions like sickle cell, where it's a lifelong condition with, you know, complications and everything, the people that are the experts, the people that actually really be telling you about their experience are the ones that are actually um, suffering with the disease. So, well, I shouldn't say suffering, but, you know, living with the disease. So I hope you enjoy and make sure if it is of interest to you, please like and comment, subscribe, and um, please share it with your family and friends. And um, if there's any other, if there's anyone out there that is a patient that's been living with um, a condition, anything, a story they want to tell, I would love to speak to you. So please, you know, drop me a message. You can either email me at lifewithdramanda at gmail.com or you can message me on Instagram. And I'm also lifewithdramanda over there as well. But I hope you enjoy and I'll see you soon. So here with me today, I have a very special guest. I've got Laurie here, um, who is um, a, a woman with sickle cell. And I'm not going to tell you much more because I want um, you, Laurie, to be able to tell us a bit about yourself um, and kind of it's just getting a better idea of what it's like and um, having sickle cell, what insights you can give us, that would be really appreciated. So welcome and thank yes. you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, as uh, Amanda said, my name's Laurie. I'm 61 years of age and born here in the UK. Um, I have three daughters and five grand grandsons and uh, um, born with sickle cell. Um, I am um, between my my mom and my father. Uh, there's six of us outside the family. There's more, but yeah. between mom and dad, the six of us, and I'm the only one with sickle cell. The others are all traits. So yeah. So as a child, um, it it was difficult, very difficult, but you learn to cope mm -hmm. with sickle cell. Um, I've had four hairdressing salons and run them and worked in them, sometimes to the point of ending up in hospital. Um, what else have I done? I worked on the European tour, the Gulf tour, and that was great. I've also had crises there, ended up in hospitals around Around the, around the country. Um, what else have I done? Uh, I'm, I'm a person that you can't beat me down. I'm a get up and go and try and life, life is life, life is for living. And that's what, you know, I, I, I try to, to tell others that, you know, you gotta be positive, got yeah. to have that positive outcome. So yeah, um, that's a little bit, about me. Um, presently, I would call myself retired, but I've got a portfolio of properties and there's not too much work that has to be done there, you know. Um, so I've got a couple of properties and we sort them when needed, but other, otherwise, no. Um, I've got to say that in August 2019, um, my doctors told me I needed to have a hip replacement and decompression and I wasn't comfortable and I needed time to think about it. Yeah. Um, so they put me on bed rest, basically wheelchair bed rest, don't walk and, you know, and uh, then I was going to have the operations in March. We had COVID. Yeah. So, so. What's happening to me is um, I was in contact with my surgeon and then a couple, couple of weeks, two weeks ago, I went to see him and basically they can't do the operation. So I'm propped up here because my spine is now bent. Oh, 
I'm sorry, it's curving. Yeah, it's curving. And um, I'm just waiting to see what they're going to do. So that's where I am. So people look at us and say, hey, you look great, whatever. And uh, the pain is, you can't explain it really. I wish they'd produce a machine that would show pain so you could actually see Mm -hmm. what pain and the ex- how extensive it is and just the levels of it so that's a little bit about me um thank you so much for sharing that um from what you just said then already on the site i've got so many questions um, yeah. <laughs> really inspiring um, you ran your own salon you've got property you've been touring it's really quite amazing to hear um but there's a couple of things that you said in last week's I did a video last week where I explained what sickle cell disease is, spoke about the symptoms that go along with it. But um, a common misconception of sickle cell disease is that still now it's um, people don't live past the age of their 30s or 40s. I've heard oh. people saying that. And, that, and you know, you know, I know, I know you know people in your personal life as well who have sickle cell disease, who have unfortunately passed away at younger ages. But um, you know, you're, you're someone here showing that you're 61 and looking amazing, like I say, and um, you're, you're still here. And, you know, just showing that the prognosis that sickle cell disease used to be, and um, when you look back a few years, has developed over time. Um, and, and so it's not always that sentence that um, everybody, that a lot of people see it as, that, you know, we used to get taught about. Um, so another thing that you said as well is about the pain. So in last week's video, I spoke about one of the two main symptoms of sickle cell are the painful crises and also the anemia that goes on along with it too. Now, what I think a lot of the time, what can be difficult in terms of dealing with sickle cell is that often you look really well. And because like you said, you've had this since you were born, this pain is something that you're kind of becomes part of life, that pain is. And so the, the way in which it is portrayed Sometimes, you know, you don't see someone, and I, I've treated patients with sickle cell, and I, they'll be in agonizing pain, but they're not, you know, screaming out or grimacing or showing it, you know, very outwardly, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. And so um, I just wanted to know, you know, what is your kind of earliest memories of dealing with sickle cell? What, what do you remember of it as a child? As a child, um, I can remember around about seven, um, I was always in pain, my legs especially, and what my dad would do with mom and dad was, do you remember Sloan's lin- liniment? No. Right, so there was Sloan's liniment, it was this liquid, it was a brownish colour, and it was strong, and it burned. So the doctors would tell them, put that on their legs, and they gave them, mom and dad this orange cotton wool-like to wrap around, so it heated the legs. So if you can imagine, this liniment is hot and you're putting this cotton wool around the legs to heat it up. So it was burning and burning my skin. And you're already in pain. And you're already in pain, but that's what they gave to the to my parents. So it was always slow as liniment and wrap it up and let's lie down, let's sleep. So blankets, blankets, mm-hmm. and this thing, your legs were on fire, you know? So um, that's what I had as a treatment. And they, I remember going to the hospital, it was New Cross, and they said at New Cross, oh, you need to have some weights on your legs. So they put these weights and were pulling my legs and kept adding big weights, heavy weights to my legs and said they needed exercising. So you imagine I'm in a crisis as I know it now, and they're putting these weights and pulling my legs up and down, oh telling God. me I needed to exercise my legs. So that was our first, we, we weren't even sure, the doctors were not sure at that time, they actually didn't diagnose it as, as sickle cell. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't know what it was, so it was like a rheumatism or something they were treating me for. So they didn't know. Yeah. I, wasn't, I actually wasn't diagnosed till I was about 15. 15 years, old. 15 years old um and at this point I'd missed a lot of time off school be very ill I was like a stick really thin I would wear layers of socks to make my legs look fatter 
<laughs> especially the ankles, like put a lot of socks on. So I didn't feel so bad. And because they call me chicken legs. So, you know, um, the 15, there was a doctor in Bilston mm -hmm. that my mom took me to called Dr. Mung, a Chinese doctor. Mm -hmm. I remember the name and he diagnosed sickle cell, but nothing else. That, that was it. Just diagnosed, nothing to it. I just got sickle cell. And that, was still, that was the end of it. Right. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that was it. Um, right. I think I missed and how, what led them to diagnose that? Was it, had you had some blood tests done? Yes, so she paid. He was private. So she took me to see him. She paid. I had blood tests, lots of blood tests, and I came back sickle cell. But they still didn't know anything about it. Told the doctors they still, still didn't know, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you said earlier that you, one of six siblings from your mom and dad, and yeah. you said all the others, they have traits, is that right? Yes, they just okay. carry you. Okay, and so your mom and dad, were they um, both they were trait? Both trait, and I remember when they were told, um, this is, I mean, they're not alive now, God bless them, but um, like, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, when they were told that they got it, they were arguing, you gave the thing to the girl, it wasn't me, oh. you gave, you know, they were both both arguing as to who did. I said, look, mom and dad, it's both of you. And it's, you know, it's just one of those. And it was very difficult to explain genetics to them and how it was made up. And, and they were saying like, the kid, other kids don't have it, only you and, but yeah, so, oops. Okay, and yeah. I was going to say, yeah. last week video, because I know it can be confusing sometimes, understanding how it's passed along. And so, yeah. last week's video, there's a, I did a little demonstration with grapes and raisins, basically showing how it's passed along so we can kind of understand it. But yes, yes. we see parents, but you can see, even in that short time, when you think about it, 60 years, is yeah. quite short, it's a short period of time, but the way which our knowledge has just evolved over that time is quite... Um, alarming really exactly. um, and so it kind of brings my son to my next question which was um comparing now to a treatment and you know what you'll find the healthcare professionals and knowing about sickle cell what differences or similarities do you see now um for me the behavior is still the same when you go into um accident emergency um and you ask them do you have a protocol and we don't have a protocol and you, they don't see the urgency of getting you painkillers and oxygen mm -hmm. because you try to explain you're in pain. Oh, you're OK. We'll give you some oxygen in a while or you have to get that oxygen. You have to stop um, the pain getting too much so that parts of the body is not affected because it's dangerous. The heart, the lungs, liver, your joints. The more pain there is, the more destruction there is. So, you know, and it's been very difficult. I mean, it even starts when you when you go to have bloods, have your bloods done. And the phlebotomists, they if you tell them, please, can you use the blue needle? No, you don't need it. Yes, I do. I know it's a blue needle. Please, can you use it? Because I don't have veins. Mm -hmm. And it, it starts there, the, the aggression of not wanting to, because they're being told yeah. they don't like it. And um, some of them can be quite aggressive with you. But, you know, I was thinking what they should use to find veins. I had to have it done before is ultrasound because it's a lot of pain that they give to us. So if you could use an ultrasound, that's so much better to find the vein or a vein, vein viewer. You know, there are so many different things out there they could use just to look for veins and give us less pain yeah yeah see a lot of these things they are simple things to do i was trained in using an ultrasound scan and um, ultrasound machine okay. to do blood tests when i was in my first year out of university and it was just an afternoon that we spent doing it and it's actually very very simple to do and most a e departments they have ultrasound machines in there to do different scans of the stomach and all sorts of things that could be used for it yeah. And on the wards, there's always access to one if you need to get one, you just need to ask around. And so yeah. I think a lot of it now, um, as you know, when, when 
we diagnose sickle cell. Every pregnant woman gets screened for sickle cell. Every baby at seven days old, they get screened for sickle cell. We don't have the excuse anymore of not knowing the disease. We do know it, we understand yeah. it. So it's all different for me because those things were not done. See, exactly. I'm, I'm, I've gone past all of that and my story is not good stories, whereas other patients might tell a different story because they're much younger, half the age of what I am. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things I've wanted to um, look into and they've said because of my age, then yes, you, you know, you can't, you're too old, you've got to be a bit younger. But one of the things I did have um, growing up and with my kids was the um, doctors would actually tell you, you won't live, I used to hear this all the time, in front of my kids, you're not going to live past 40. Yeah. And I used to say, watch and see. I'm here to live and live life. So I will. Yeah. And that was the magic age. It just seems that everyone's way back to 40, 40 yes. age for sickle cell. Yeah. But you're, you're here to show us that, you know. Exactly. And, and you didn't have your care from, you didn't have sickle cell care from the moment that you were born or from, you know, those early days. You didn't have that. No. And even when you were diagnosed, you still didn't quite, you know, those things still didn't happen by then. Um, whereas yeah. now, imagine, you know, the children being born now that have sickle cell, they're being treated right from the start. So that 40 yeah. years, we need to throw it out the window now. Yeah, yeah. And the individual. Um, but yeah, what you were saying about, um, you know, the, the not hearing your pain, not understanding, not listening when you say, use this, use this, um, the blue needle, or, you know, I'm in a lot of pain, give me oxygen, these are the painkillers that I need. I've seen that there is good care, what, what from what I've seen um, personally for pediatric patients, a lot of the time the children, um, especially in Wolverhampton, where I have worked in the children's ward, they come in and they're known to have sickle cell, the children in Wolverhampton that have it. And we have a protocol that's set out for them and they usually get straight to the pediatric area. But when it comes to adult care, um, I think the consultants that look after the patients long-term, they go to the clinics, they may you know, what, know what's happening. But when they come in on those, sudden admissions, I think there's a lot that needs to be improved with yeah. that. Yeah. One, they need to have the proper wards for us because when I've gone in, I've been put on the old people's board because I've gone in with hip pains or um, leg pains. They put me with the orthopedic. So that's been put with the elderly. Um, I'm telling old people, I'm one of the old ones now, but yeah, they put you on there and you're not getting the care. I was in hospital the once and I didn't see my hematologist for a week. Imagine, and you know, then after a week, they just come and just have a look at you and, you know, oh, carry on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the complications of sickle cell can be so serious. Um, yes. You know, a, a lot of what sparked this discussion um, and why I wanted to speak with you as well is because of what happened to that um, young 21 year old man called Evan Smith, who, yeah. was, you know, the people came from just obviously didn't understand the seriousness of sickle cell. No. And, and his bed, the bed that he had as well, was not the right bed. It had no no oxygen on it. Yeah. So like, I mean, that's something you need immediately, and it wasn't there for him to have, and for him to have to telephone and to get the hospital to recognise. Such a shame. I mean, okay. yeah, yeah, that's gross negligence, you yeah. know. And that's the thing because um, something that I do. I think for me, um, in terms of when I've treated patients with sickle cell and where I've seen, I, I don't um, manage people with sickle cell, I'm not a hematologist, so it's all been when I was working inside hospitals, working in A&E, working on the paediatric ward, working on the acute um, assessment unit and things is where I've dealt with patients with sickle cell. And something that I've learned, um, I think for me, because my training in sickle cell hadn't just come from university, um, my family, I, I, from when I was younger, I used to volunteer for one of the sickle cell charities. Um, my parents were on the board for it. So I, I had an understanding of sickle cell outside of what I was just trained, trained in medicine. Um, and then when I was working on pediatrics, I actually um, did quite a lot of work with the lead, that, the lead doctor who dealt with 
the patients with sickle cell. And so I learned a lot from that. And so things that I do when I have a patient with sickle cell is that I listen to them. Um, yes. People with sickle cell, they have, especially when it's the adults and when they're children, their parents, um, they are experts. And that's why I want to speak to you today, Laurie. Thank you for coming on because you're experts in yourself and what patients yes. you need. And it's like, you know, you know the time is, you know where your veins are, you know what needles to use. And I just listen. And I think sometimes, um, that can be hard for some healthcare professionals because you know feeling as though they know what's best and everything but there are particular patients especially ones that are used to coming in and out of hospital so often that know what they need and so to anyone listening please listen to what Laurie's saying anyone that's a healthcare professional just to hear that listen to the patient if they tell you to use the needle tell you to go in this vein don't ignore them yeah, um, exactly. but yeah the, the <laughs> next thing I wanted to ask was um when it, you said that you have three daughters? Yes, I do, yes. And yeah. so when it came to, you know, deciding to start a family or having your children or finding a partner, did your diagnosis of sickle cell kind of come into it for you? No, because it still was fairly new okay. at that point. So no, I just, I was just lucky mm -hmm. that uh, their father um, didn't have sickle cell. So that all three of my daughters are trait. Yeah, they carried the trait. So, and their sons, um, the one daughter, her sons carry the trait as well. Okay. So, so yeah. um, that's the thing. So we didn't know a lot about it before. So in yeah. um, in my family, I believe it's on my my dad's side, and um, yeah. there is sickle cell there. And so a lot of my grandma's siblings, we think. Yeah hearing about how they passed away and when they're young children we think it was sickle cell um, yes. and so um, I don't have the trait but at the time like my grandma shouldn't have known what my granddad's status was and then my parents and their siblings choosing their partners I don't think it would have even been a conversation really at that time yes. but now for your daughters then and um, so when you had your daughters and you knew about their status did you ever speak to them about what they do with a partner was this ever a conversation yes I yes I did actually because then it was a thing as they grow enough to have their own kids that you know um you know exactly how it is and how I've gone through life so mm -hmm. you don't want your kids to come with that so luckily they're just it's, it's funny enough the one daughter her husband's Dutch Mm -hmm. white dutch and the kids have got the trait so yeah so it's just amazing how it passes along yeah um but i'm glad that none of them have got a uh, full sickle cell yeah because mm -hmm. like you said you know you're so inspiring the careers that you've had the things that you've done i missed um, i missed a little bit out i forgot to tell you that um i actually went to switzerland and I, I lived there for a couple of years and i was skiing the ones and uh ended up very ill and now I know it was a crisis I was ill for a month mm -hmm. just passed right out after skiing obviously the high altitudes and, and the cold and the cold I mean I'd go I'd think well I'll go skiing with a little top on under my jacket <laughs> yeah because the jacket was so warm yeah, but I didn't yeah. know any any better yeah. you know and enjoyed it but yeah the doctors were confused and baffled didn't know what to what to do or how to treat me yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you know, thank you so much for sharing all that. Honestly, yeah. um, it's just inspiring to hear somebody that's gone through sickle cell. You've been able to have a really quite amazing life. It sounded like with all the different ventures you've had, the right. that you've built. But it has been, as you were saying, you know, some of these adventurous things you did, you ended up in pain afterwards in the hospital admissions. And um, it's something to be really aware of. Um, and I th hope that going forward, um, people when they're planning for families, they can think about it a little bit. But also knowing that even if you do have a child or you yourself have sickle cell, there's much more help out there. And hopefully we can get the word out more and more about for the healthcare mm -hmm. professionals about how to treat somebody with sickle cell. But thank you so much for meeting with me today, Laurie. Thank you. Can I just add, I just want to add, I've got so much more oh, to yeah, say. Know, okay, so I've not just got sickle cell right now. I've got fibromyalgia. I've got every single arthritis you can think of. Um, there's so many things that are wrong with me, but it's about, like I said earlier, having the positive outlook because 
The problem is a lot, I think uh, they did a survey and it's 74.2% of sickle cell patients are depressed, uh, they've got mental issues. And I think what, what they need to do, they need to address that for one, then there's an inequality within the healthcare system for us with sickle cell. And we need to get all the help that we can um, because I can sit here and, and I'm okay and I've had a great life. Others haven't and they need the help. And if in, even if it means sitting one-on-one -on -one with them and you know, gaining, gaining, giving them some strength and making them gain and get something positive out of life because a lot of them will just only look at the pain. There's other things, strive for other things and feel that, yes, he can do it. I want to do it as well. I want to enjoy that. Because yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to be walking and doing things. I want to do things. Yeah. You know, this this is held me for a while, but it's not forever. Mm -hmm. exactly. and that's where I say. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And that's the thing. Just because you have sickle cell doesn't mean you're not at risk of having other illnesses. Yeah. Of course, let's remember that as well. You can't put everything down to sickle cell. We need to look at you as a whole person too. And one of the biggest risk factors for mental health problems is having a chronic illness or having chronic pain. And that's what happens with sickle cell. Yeah, exactly. every day. And people say like, you know, um, are you in pain every day? Every day, every minute. It's just that you, you've got this learning mechanism mm -hmm. and we shouldn't have to, but you do it. Because if you don't, you're just going to be lying down, you know, not being able to do anything at all. Yeah. No, so. having that where you're having pain every minute every day and you know a lot of the things that you do for might want to do for enjoyment or try and be adventurous and then you end up having a crisis you can understand why somebody would want to just lie down and just be like you know yeah. you can understand but i hear what you but what you're saying is having that positive outlook having the people around you to support you and push yeah. through it so that you can have that you know full life as well Yes, and my kids are great. My husband's fantastic. He's a blessing. He pushes me around in the wheelchair. <laughs> and I know it's, he's not well. So, but you know, I've got support, great support system. So I'm very fortunate. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm so glad that you do have the support there. And, um, you know, thank you so much for sharing. And I want to just, you know, wish you all the best, especially with everything that's happened with your hips and your back. Um, you know, I pray that there's something that they'll be able to do to help you become more mobile and, you know, do something to relieve some pain for you. Thank you so much, Amanda. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been brilliant. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll do this again. Yeah, I haven't said everything you. I want to say yet. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah, you. I know because we've been talking for about half an hour now, but I know there's more that, that you know, you could it share. Is because it's a lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. It's, a lifetime. Um, it's just the start of the conversation. Yeah. Um, I promise I won't do it for 61 years, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to hear it and so um, you know, to everyone watching I hope that you've learned something today and um, if there's anything that you can relate to any questions that you have please leave them down below in the comment section and um, hopefully we can get Laurie back do another video help us to share some more gems with us and we can answer any questions that you might have as well but until next time don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you soon thank you bye bye Thank you.